Yeah, how how are things going with the new transition of the Fermi bot? that I bought it from pretty much lied to everybody and told everybody that she had partnered with me or that she had hired me or there's a couple variations of how this got told. Mm -hmm. But then whenever they found out that no, that I bought the practice, some of them were like, I'm not doing that. I didn't get to, I didn't get the choice. I didn't get told. I just got told that she was partnering. I didn't find, I didn't know she was leaving. And so, you know, I was like, you know, hey, I, I understand. I get it. Um, and then some of them, like one of them, craziest thing, when we signed the contract, the week before we signed the contract, 17% of her business walked out the door and she still signed the contract to include those, that 17%. Oh, wow. So... <laughs> Which was stupid on her part because the way the contract was written was that to to deal with attrition. Uh-huh. So I bought it, I bought it for 100k, and then anything up to 25 percent of that business that I lost, then I had to eat it. I just had to do it and deal with it and be done with it, right? Mm-hmm. And then anything above that, I were taken like. If I had lost 26% of the business, then anything above that, we're taking a like. Mm-hmm. So, oh, wow. So I've got I got a good book of business, and I'm still, like, I've gone up on most of them's prices, and, you know, I'm still, I'm, right now I'm sitting at about 17K a month. Awesome. Just from bookkeeping. Okay. So, and I'm I'm pretty excited because I've got all the tax work coming in. I've got, and I and I don't know what it is. I do not know what has happened, but like over the last three weeks, I would say, I bet you I've had 15 people that have reached out needing new needing the bookkeeper, and I'm like, I'm here for all of. Them. Um, Millie okay. Gregory. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she was trying to get her stuff off the ground, and, and we agreed on an hourly rate for her, and she's going to be an independent contractor doing her own thing, but at the same time, she'll be doing bookkeeping for me because I had two employees, and I really, really thought that the one guy was going to work out great. Um, he had been an IRS agent, and I thought, which he hadn't been an IRS agent long, but I thought, well, still, any exposure is better than none, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I should know better, but um, and he he was currently a bookkeeper for a, a one that's going to pay you $40 an hour because I don't see anything that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Or not $40 an hour, but before I pay you 40 hours. Mm-hmm. And uh, he he didn't like that too good, so he didn't last too long. He liked the and accountability? He didn't like the accountability, and I don't think that he, I just don't think he was doing anything. Yeah. Like, I, I found out today, like, he was working on some tax returns for, for me, and he, now, these are tax returns that are, like, way late, like 18, 2018, 2019, 2021. 
Mm -hmm. He's been asking the business owners for, I don't know, about three months for the same documents. Uh -huh. And I need this, I need this, I need this. Well, I contacted the business owner Saturday, and I'm like, look, we just got a letter from the IRS today. This is what's going on. I need you to work with me here. And he was like, Shannon, I swear I think I've already seen all that. And I was like, well, I'm going to go back behind and just make sure that we got to do something. We got to, we got to get these returns finished. Come to find out, man, had sent the stuff six weeks ago. And I was just like, oh, Lord. And the final straw for me was whenever we had been doing, we had done a 1120S, an S Corp tax return for, mm -hmm. um, for one of my clients, and we the, just so happens that the client happens to be my best friend's husband, uh -huh. and he and I had closed out the guy's books, done the book, get, done the tax return together, like it was done, it was ready to go, like we were just waiting on some information. Really, we were waiting on them to cut him to come and sign. Mm -hmm. And I was so thankful that I had thought ahead to actually print out the um the financial statements that we use to do the tax return because the final straw was Valentine's Day whenever, uh, no, it wasn't Valentine's, it was Tuesday before. Um, I start looking at something and realize that he had gone and changed a bunch of stuff in prior year and he had messed up a whole bunch of, like just going willy nilly, just changed a bunch of crap in prior year. And I'm just like, uh -huh. What are you doing? Why did you do this? And uh, so anyway, after that point, I said, no, we can't do this anymore. So now it's just me and Millie now and my other employee that I had. And then I've got an admin person to help with filing and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. it's it's still, when I met you a year ago, I didn't have any employees but just me and two clients. And now I've got like 100 clients. Uh -huh. <laughs> So I just wanted to, um, and what I thought was cool was that uh, I got an email today from one of the very first people that I got in touch with through LinkedIn, and she sent me a message, and she said, yeah, we talked on LinkedIn about this time last year about referring business, and I just really need somebody to do my books. Do you think that you could help me? Uh -huh. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was cool, and I thought, I got to call Bryce and tell him. I, I think it's uh, I think it's great. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of. Uh, I've seen that there's a lot of difference in thought as far as cold, like cold messaging or whatever on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. which is all we're doing. It's just cold messaging. I like it because I'm not the one personally doing it. I just I can pick it up whenever they they're on the hook. I can pick it up and run with it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not having to be the one to actually say, "Hey, you want to you want to talk." Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the uh, the VAs have been awesome, and I just, I can't thank you enough for all your help. Yeah. So, that's great to hear, man. That's, that's great to hear. You're killing it. 17,000 months of bookkeeping. That's not, that's not kind of the tax, though. I guess all in total, what, what's the highest you're uh, making the month, you think? About 40. You made 40 grand? Nice. Um, yeah. I made forty grand last month, and then I haven't made forty grand consistently since 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 June of last year. Mm -hmm. But it's it's been it's been consistently more than fifteen or twenty. Uh -huh. okay. I mean, when it when we started talking last April, I think I had made like oh, no, 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 no. I think it was, I think I, honestly I think in April of last year I was at about like a thousand dollars a month because I've lost that big client. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think I think I was at like a thousand dollars a month, and then I was like, "This is do or die. I have to do something." Yeah. And then after that point, that was in April, and then by like June, if you remember, I had billed out thirty-seven thousand in June, mm -hmm. and was like, "Holy crap! Where did this come from?" Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it it some months are not as big and some months you know, but it's still it's mm -hmm. the work is consistent and the fact that this stuff is just like coming out of the woodwork is like it kind of blows my mind. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. I mean that that's that's in less than a year, so I mean that's what, ten months, so 
happens yeah. really fast. And yeah, like you keep doing the exact same thing you keep doing. Plus, the next time if you go and buy another another business, you know, you know what to look out for this time. Yeah, I'm not going to do it in December. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did it, you know, so the buyout happened in December, and then what comes in January? Yep. <laughs> Year end, all the 1099s and W-2s, and you're trying to figure out all these clients. And I mean, it was just, thankfully, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Like, I, I've been working a lot of long days. I ain't going to lie. Like, I've been working six and seven days a week from 8 o'clock in the morning till sometimes 1 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And, but, because the work had to get done, but I had to figure out what all had to, you know, what all had yeah. to be done. And, and, but now it feels good to be in a place to where I've got some clients that I'm not working with them anymore. Mm-hmm. I just sent the disengagement notice to one of them today, just a few minutes ago. I'm sure I'll get a notice back from it soon, but this guy wanted me to do his taxes and everything, but nah, I'm, I'm not, we're not, we're not going to go there. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Hey, I just. It feels good to be able to know that I don't have to just put up with just anybody's shit. Uh, yeah. You're not gonna talk. You're not gonna talk to me however you want to. I'm not gonna talk to you any which way sideways. It's not you know. I'm not gonna be ugly to you, but you're not gonna be ugly to me. You're not gonna. You're not gonna tell me what a worthless you know worthless whatever I am for 165 dollars a month. That ain't gonna happen. Yeah. So the next one on the top of the block is the is one that I had that I got back in January June that was one of that thirty seven thousand that I built out real quick uh-huh. and uh, but I'm I'm and the funny thing about it is is that that woman she's like branched out part like she took half of her business and split it and gave it to her wife or whatever they are uh-huh. and gave it to her and then I have both of their business and I'm making fifteen hundred dollars a month from both of them. But the headache ain't worth it. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it feels good to be able to be in a place to where, no, I never want to turn business away. But at the same time, I have no intentions of putting up with that. Yeah. So it feels good to be able to say, no, nah, well, we're not doing this anymore. Uh-huh. Okay. So not to mention the fact I, I'm not really interested in helping people do, you know, commit tax evasion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's right. That's right. So, but I'm I'm kind of trying to debate on how long I'm going to wait on that one. She keeps wanting me to meet her face to face, but this is the first month that she has not paid me and hasn't mentioned anything about it. Mm. And I, she's gotten she's gotten invoice notices and all that good stuff. But she the only thing she keeps saying is, I just want to meet you. And talk about my 2022 numbers and my January numbers. Okay. What would you like to know? But she wants to do it face to face, and it's just I don't know. Something's odd about it. Something something's off, and I'm almost just to the point where I'm ready to say, eh, you keep your money. I'm done. Yeah, give me one. I think I grab my charger. Back. Yeah, that's, that's cool. It's so so great to see you do that. I mean, you you might be at sixty seventy k per month by by this time next year. I hope so. I don't kind of hope so. I really hope so. <laughs> but here's the cool thing too, right? Online, everyone always looks at like ten k, fifty k, a hundred k, right? If you're doing mm-hmm. eighty three thousand dollars a month, that's a million dollar per year run rate. Oh hell, it is, ain't it? Huh? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I never thought about that. Yeah. And I remember, I remember you saying something about eighty eight thousand dollars a month, and that's a hundred thousand dollars. You know, I was like, I don't know if I can get there or not. Uh huh. <laughs> and I mean, if I had ever known how easy it really, truly was to make thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month, I would have done it 
just decades ago. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't have brass then. I need I needed brass to give me that push to show me which way to go. So yeah. and I'll tell you what, it's funny because I've had all kinds of people say, you know, hit me up for coaching top stuff, and I'm like, I don't need a coach. I already got one. Yeah. Well, he do da, 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 da. It don't matter what he does. What he does is he helps me succeed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's the game is going to keep getting easier and easier for you. I mean, because it's just like you know what to do. You have the multiplication factor. Um, yeah. If you if you ever need an, need a contractor, one lady in the program I think might actually be a good addition. His name's Ira H I R A. She does both taxes and she does um, accounting and bookkeeping. So, really? Yeah. Well, she's located in Florida, though, so a little, little, little far away from you. But, um, that's, that's, tell me her name again. Hira H. H I R A Devita. D E V I T A? Yeah, it's either T A or T R. I can't remember exactly. Um, okay. Okay. Not, well, I don't, I don't care where they're at because Millie, she's in Wyoming. Mm-hmm. So I don't care. I don't care. As long as they produce good work. I tested Millie with taxes. Uh, and Millie knocked it out of the park mm-hmm. with a tax a tax thing. And she was, like, so precise and all that. And whenever I started thinking about well, I had to get rid of the other guy, and I was like, what am I going to do? I've got to have another set of hands. I'm tired of working all these hours. Mm-hmm. The purpose of this is not to work 80 million hours. The purpose of this is to be able to have a person that, you know what I'm saying, to have somebody mm-hmm. else to do the work. And me to just keep getting the work and then just making the money. So that, that's the goal. So maybe I'll reach out to her and see what she thinks and okay. what she's looking for and all that. Because, I mean, if she's interested in, in doing independent contracting type stuff, then... Oh, yeah, that's what she's looking for. She does not want a job, you know? <laughs> right, right. Well, and I, I don't... I guess my thing is, is I want to be able to make sure that the people that I've got, that they know what they're doing yeah and i've had enough going on with with people that just didn't have clue and just start and maybe the thing of it is is that i'm so particular just because i do have probably more knowledge than most of the people in that have come through your, that i have seen that have come through your program mm-hmm. that i don't know that you have many people that have master's degrees and eas yeah. and all that kind of stuff maybe maybe some mm-hmm. but i don't think I don't know that you're in, in 20, 20 plus years of experience. I'm not sure that you have that many people that are there yet. Yeah, it, it really depends. I mean, like, like right now, we're, we're getting a really wide range. So it's like we're getting people who are, like, you know, maxed out in corporate. And then we're also getting a lot of people who are, like, new. Um, yeah. So it just, it just really depends um, who you're looking for. I mean, we've even had to start training certain students inside the mentorship. Like, if they either don't have a lot of experience or if they're in the legal industry, we actually like have built out like a more of like a mini coaching to make sure they uh-huh. understand exactly what they need to do in order to like perform better. That's yeah. About that number of them. So yeah, I mean, run them through the tests that you have. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's that's really because you want someone out of the box. But the the biggest thing is is really not just the experience, but really the trustworthiness. Yes. Yeah. That's that's yeah. the challenge because like cause, well, you can train people how to do accounting and bookkeeping. It might be a little bit different since you're very particular in how you like doing it. But I mean, yeah. the, the worst thing is when you have a guy like the guy you fired where it's like you couldn't trust them because you need to go back in time to figure out what they did, why they did it, how they did it, who they did it to. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, and 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 I wouldn't even say that I'm I'm so particular as far as like how I want things done. It's just that I'm very thorough. Mm-hmm. And like the book, the books that I bought from this lady, I just realized that not all bookkeepers are the same. Not everybody takes pride in everything. You know, not everybody looks at everything. Like she, oh my God, every single one of these clients, their AR is freaking atrocious. Mm-hmm. I mean, stuff back from 2020 for AR that's still showing is open, but yet it's not. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, how how does she do it? Like, how do you how do you look? But a lot of a lot of bookkeepers don't look at the financial statements. They don't have a clue how the financial statements even work, or what the I mean, what the purpose is, and how they work with each other. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I did in the beginning. I mean, I had to look at it. I had to figure out what it was. And anyway, but I mean, so if you, I don't know, like if you're interested, if you're doing a if you're doing classes and you've already got the people there, yeah. 
and you need somebody that can help teach bookkeeping top classes, you know, mm -hmm. maybe we can work something out because I would love to see other, like I would like to be able to hire some of these people that you've got, mm -hmm. but that they know the basic premise of bookkeeping. They know how, like they know the things to go look for. And it's more than just, it's more than just categorizing some stuff and throwing it, you know, clearing it out of the bank feed and reconcile a bank statement. It's, there's a little bit more to it than that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if that's something that you're interested in, if you want to think about it and get back to me and let me know. But, I mean, I would definitely be interested in uh, helping produce the next um, decent group of bookkeepers. Okay. So, yeah, let's, let's definitely do that because, like, like, right now, what I'm kind of envisioning is, like, because um, I don't know from Brangelica, the lady who does a lot of my YouTube videos. Yeah. Yeah, so, so she was interested in doing something similar. And I have another lady named Sharon. She, she's been, like, kind of the, the test pilot of it because she's a pretty good amount of experience. But I think that might be what we do long term. Because, um, I mean, like, we're, we're getting a lot of people who are, like, displaced, especially with, like, the mortgage industry going down. Or yep. um, real estate. so it's like we're getting a lot of new incomers. Yeah. Um. So I'm, I'm trying to learn how to like spin it really, really correctly, so we can uh -huh. get people into the industry that that really have the potential to really make some money with it. Yeah. Um, so I think probably like the next year, year and a half. Yeah, we have to coordinate that too because I want to see exactly how much time you have. Like, would you go from like a group call? And like, we're really kind of um ironing out the details with that. Now the, the big challenge that we get right. Is whenever you're trying to teach them an accounting or bookkeeping, as soon as they start getting a client, they freak out. Yeah. So they're calling, they're texting me every single day. Hey, tell me with this. Hey, I, I need help with this. Hey, what, what's going on here? So we're yeah. kind of adding in checks and balances to where it's like they can actually identify what is the real problem, where to start, why they feel like it's going on. I think that's really going to make things a lot easier for everyone involved. Yep. Yep. Well, and I know most new bookkeepers, and, and even for myself, like I don't have anybody that doesn't use QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't want anybody that doesn't use QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. Not, and, and I mean, I did. I just did a huge job um, that they use Microsoft Dynamics that thankfully I didn't get. I really didn't want the job, and I bid it so that if I got it, I would be okay with it. Like it was a $60,000 a year job, mm -hmm. right? Just to do a month end close. Like none of the other bookkeeping, none of the other nothing, just a mm -hmm. month end close. And, uh, but there's a lot more to that story than that. But yeah. point of was, was that I didn't want, but the thing, I mean, like, if you follow, QuickBooks has some really good tools in place to be able to, to do it effectively and keep clean, accurate books. Like the only way that, like if you use the, the, uh, book review feature, you're going to be pretty pretty spot on in making sure that you're catching everything, right? But most people have no idea what it is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but most, I think the easiest jumping off point for anybody or everybody truly is QuickBooks because you can get the free account. It's pretty widely known. Everybody knows QuickBooks. You know, it's, that's, just, that's just how it is. So um, I, I would definitely... Especially with QuickBooks, I'd definitely be interested in teaching a QuickBooks class to say, you know, hey, this is how you're going to get started. These are the things you need to look for. This is the thing, you know, this is where your problems are going to be coming in. This is where you're going to find the issue to this. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, too, I think I think the only other thing that that kind of makes me want to teach but not want to teach is the fact that people – want answers handed to them. Mm. And I, I do too. Like, I want somebody to hand me the easy answer without looking for it, you know, looking for it and digging for it. But you don't learn nothing that way. Mm. And, but the people that want to, that want you to hand it to them and give you all the answers, uh, for you to give them all the answers and then them never have to figure any of it out on their own. Mm -hmm. I think that drives me the craziest in the world. Because, you know, I've got a friend that she's trying to go to school. If you want to call her a friend, she's somebody I used to work with. She's she's going back to school. She's forty five, but whatever, good for her. And I thought I was like, yay, that's great. I'm so happy for you. Good for you. Way to way to make a change in your life. 
But now it she's asking me every question under the sun. Who should I call? How should I do this? What should I do for this? And I'm thinking, I don't have nobody telling me none of all this stuff. And I'm sure I'm not for it. Huh? Some hours for the program. I, I think, yeah, I think that's going to be one thing how like, you reflect our pricing. Because like, some of these people, like, if they never want to learn it, right, we're basically going to be like, if we can like really systemize it correctly so they have instant access to the correct answer. And then we have it like, for like a monthly monthly fee for like $500 a month or something. We might get yeah. these guys for like, you know, a year and a half where we're supporting them, really helping them out. Yeah. Yeah. For five hundred dollars a month, you dang right I'd be on somebody's. I mean, I ain't gonna be on somebody's back and call to be like, hey, what you know, every twenty minutes well, that ain't gonna happen. But see, that, 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 that's that's the whole point of this thing. I'm trying to like systemize it because that's see that's the that's the trick, right? How, how do you how do you support someone without directly giving your time away outside of like maybe doing one or two group calls a week or you know what I mean? Right. That's 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 the key. So it's kind of like that's that's what I'm building out this like three to six months. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So it's. We're, I think I think we're on the same page. Like exactly what we're thinking. It's like because that's that's exactly what uh, Sharon said to me. She was like, "Man, I, we just I just talked with this lady for an hour. We got over all the problems. But the next day she called me with a, with another problem. So she only has three clients. How does she have all these problems? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Well, and I think I think part of that it, there's two. It's a twofold problem there. Part of it is lack of knowledge and how things work together, and lack of you know lack of experience slash knowledge. The other part of that is the lack of confidence to do anything at all. Mm-hmm. And I think really, honestly, as long as you're not deleting stuff, that you know, as long as you're not deleting things and you're not doing things in a prior period. You should be okay, and you're following what, you know, follow follow your guide path here. You'll be fine. But mm-hmm. people don't do that. They just start messing with stuff, and they don't understand how. I can't tell you how many times I've gone in and cleaned up books and stuff, and they've got car payments going to um, an expense when it's supposed to be hitting a liability and, I, you know, all the things, and it's just nothing hits right, but they don't understand. I mean, I'm dealing with that with, the books that I just bought, and this woman said she's been doing bookkeeping for 15 years. Wow. And I thought, Lord. I just, I was like blown away. But Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, but yeah, just keep it in mind. Yeah, it, it depends. It depends how you get to the clients, right? Because, I mean, like, and it depends on your time allotment, right? Because like, the profit margins really start going down as you need more and more hands on deck. So, for example, doing sales calls to get someone inside of your program is a job in itself, right? Let's, right. Let's say that you're closing, you know, even if you close, like, 50% of people, depending on, like, how – how cheap your price is, right? If you, if you get 10 calls, each of those calls take probably about an hour piece. That's 10 hours a week that you just lost in addition to onboarding five hours of onboarding calls with people. In addition to how, like, so it's just, like, that's the biggest um, challenge when it comes to, like, scaling it and, like, keeping that, that profitability high. I think one thing that could work, too, and this, this might be something we do, is, like, maybe approaching different college organizations. And see yeah. if we can like do some sort of um, either training for them for some of their students or something. That's kind of what yeah. I think it might be the uh, an easier step. That's at least what Angelica was doing. That's pretty cool. That's pretty good. That's pretty smart. Yeah. So that that <laughs> way. How, how does one. that work though? Without because when I think of contracts and the colleges and all that, because of the fact that I've had doing continuing ed and that kind of thing teaching continuing it, how does that keep from interfering with, like, how, 
how do you transition that from not being part of the school? You know what I'm saying? Like, is it one of those things where you're working with the, like, the small business centers and that kind of thing? Or is it like, you're not talking about teaching for the school, right? Not teaching for the school. I, I think it is with the SBDC, but it was, it was some sort of organization that, that was, like, partnering with her inside of the college. Okay. So it's basically like like mini webinars. So, so okay. for example, maybe there's a nonprofit inside of the school or whatever, right? And okay. maybe they're inside of like the SBDC, but they might not be the SBDC. And every single month, they're looking to bring in like subject matter experts on X Y Z topic. Angelica happened to be the subject matter expert for accounting and bookkeeping. She basically then, um, I, I believe she either can charge the students directly and stuff, or she could just split the amount of money, like, on a per-head kind of basis. So if, like, okay. 10 people show up or 100 people show up, you know, she's making a different amount of money versus just, like, a uniform hourly rate. Right. Okay. Well. So. Huh. Depends. Well, it's definitely something, definitely something to think about and just know that now that I'm kind of coming up from air. Well, the other thing, too, like, for now that I'm kind of, well, like I said, I'm coming up from air for air, things are starting to kind of, Slack off a little bit, even though it's tax time and I got a lot of tax resolution stuff going on and all that. Um, once I get enough people in place to handle all the bookkeeping workloads, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, right? Like I only got 39 bookkeeping clients. Mm -hmm. I say only, but <laughs> you know, I, I am getting ready to sign like 10 more just because of part of it is people hearing about me. Part of it is other business owners bringing me their stuff. Uh huh. And, uh, hey, I got another business that I'm opening. Hey, my wife has a business. Hey, my daughter has a business. You know? Mm -hmm. and but, but at the same time, I want to get it to where I have enough people in place to do that kind of stuff. Even though I enjoy the work, I don't want to feel like that's all I'm good for. Right? But I want to be able to, to do these other things and enjoy what I'm doing. So um, just keep it in mind. Let's just continue to talk about it and... Uh, you know, like I said, now that now that I'm starting to get a little bit of breathing room here, it'll it'll offer some time to really think about it and 